Next up, please welcome Alibaba's Vice President and General Manager of North America, Lee McCabe. Good morning. Now, I don't know if there's a competition for walkout music, but surely I'm in the lead. I, I don't know how you top the stones to walk out to. Uh, let's start with a question. Let's start with a show of hands. Who's heard of Alibaba? This is a good start. Put your hands up again if you think you know a lot about Alibaba, if you think you're pretty familiar with the company. Not many of you. Okay, so hopefully I can tell you something new today. So I'm going to talk about Alibaba. But, you know, it would be remiss of me to talk about Alibaba without first talking about China. Because for most people, Alibaba represents China and represents an easy gateway to China. And the China story is incredible, especially when it comes to e-commerce. When you think leading up to today, as we see China as the biggest e-commerce market in the world. So let's look how we got there. You know, even a generation ago, most households in China relied on Russian coupons to buy everything, basic household goods, to shoes, to bicycles, to food. And without doubt, the most dominant industry was agriculture for the most of the country. It then changed in the 70s and 80s, sweeping reform across the country, advances in logistics, shipping containers, and China became the factory of the world. Whatever industry you could think of, whatever product, it was probably getting manufactured in China and then sent to the rest of the world. It changed again about 10 years ago. For the first time ever, companies could access the Chinese consumer. And that was a big base. So 10 years ago, you saw this big consumer market, consumer and service-driven market emerging. And now, we're in a world of cross-border. You have this massive middle class in China. They are hungry for international product, especially US product. They can't get enough. And US companies are selling in, in droves to China right now. But it hasn't always been that easy. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of companies taking missteps in China and how hard it is in China. And companies did take missteps. So if you look at the mistakes they made, especially the big ones, they thought they could go in and make a fast book and then come back out again. They were too short-term focused. They didn't empower local teams in the market. And they certainly didn't move fast enough. If any of you have been to China, the dynamic is a lot faster. The Chinese market is a completely different beast to the US market. You have to move faster. And they definitely didn't pay sufficient attention to local market needs. And that's where they fell short. But now companies are going back in again. Companies have learned from the mistakes, and they're going back in in volume. And they have to. When you look at the big global economies, there's China and the US in the game. If you want growth, you have to be in China. And companies are getting that now and doing well. Nike, over a quarter of their profits now come from China. Buick, 80% of their international sales are happening in China. Starbucks are expanding incredibly aggressively in China and being very successful with it. And Apple, two years ago, China overtook Europe to be the second most important market globally for Apple. Companies know if they want growth, they have to go to China. If you look at the consumption and the growth, China is the fastest growing market by far. In terms of economies, it'll be neck and neck with the US in around 10 to 12 years. If you want growth, you look to China. And just the growth in China is bigger than total consumption in some big established Western countries like Germany. The growth and size of things is incredible. Even more so for e-commerce. If you look at e-commerce, by 2019, not too far away, 29% of all global online shoppers will be in China. Nearly a third of, online, of global online shoppers will be in China. You can't ignore that. But even better, because they're spending more, because they're more active online than any other consumer, 55% of global e-commerce sales will happen in China. If you're in business, and especially e-commerce, you can't ignore this. There's never been a, a bigger opportunity 
for growth. And let's look how we got there. So it was a number of things. It was really a perfect storm that created this incredibly commerce market in China. And the perfection really started with imperfection. So if you look at retail, the retail landscape was pretty weak, and it was inefficient. And if you think about the ratio between shopping malls and one million people, in the US, there were 12 shopping malls per one million people. In China, there are two. So you start off with this very inefficient retail landscape. It was ripe for innovation. It was ripe for e-commerce. And e-commerce came along. So we came along with other companies, and China soon became a very healthy e-commerce market, driven largely by marketplaces like Alibaba. So you had a big e-commerce uh, marketplace. Next, you needed trust. So you needed trust in these services. So payments were developed, third-party payments. We developed an escrow, which later became Alipay. So you added trust to the system, which improved the process even more. Then the last one is logistics. So you need cheap logistics. And logistics are cheap in China. So if you're sending a regular package, uh, let's say a 100-gram package, in the US, if you send it from LA to New York, it'll cost you about $26. In China, that same journey is $1.00. 20. So way cheaper. And it has to be. For logistics, China is a much harder market. In the US, there are 10 cities that have over a million people. In China, there are 143 cities that have over a million people. So when you're talking logistics, your logistics platform has got to be better, more efficient, more effective, and cheaper than anywhere else. And mobile. China absolutely leads the world in mobile and mobile commerce. And like everything else, China developed differently. Now out here, we went from bricks and mortar to desktop to laptop to smartphone. China just jumped straight to smartphone. And for the majority of people in China, the smartphone is the internet. It's their primary device for accessing the internet. For a lot of people, it's their only device for accessing the internet. So if you think about the internet, there are 700 million internet users in China. That's more than twice the full population of the US. It's nearly the population of EMEA. Just incredible. It's getting bigger. And we always get asked the question a lot, is China slowing down? Do you see a softness in the growth? And the answer is no, no way. It's simply because of this. Only half the country is currently online. There's a lot more growth to go. And the rest of the country is getting connected super fast, especially rural areas. So there's on only one way this can go, especially e-commerce, and it's north, straight north. And mobile has been a huge driver for our business. But of course, we didn't start mobile. We started off very humble beginnings. Jack Ma, you may have heard of. Jack Ma was our founder. The company was founded in an apartment in Hangzhou, about three hours outside of Shanghai. Jack founded the company with 18 entrepreneurs with this dream and mission to make it easy to do business anywhere. And we still retain that mission. We actually still retain the apartment, so we use it for special projects. Still exists, pretty cool to visit. So humble beginnings. This is how we first looked in 2000. Alibaba.com, very simple site was set up for international trade, largely for China outbound. But since then, we've grown. So now we have this ecosystem with a lot more companies. So we have core commerce. We have Tmall, which is the biggest opportunity for US sellers to sell to China. We have Taobao. We have AliExpress. In China, about 80% of e-commerce goes to our platforms. We have a big and growing mobile media and entertainment division. We have Youku, which is the YouTube of China. We have Alibaba Pictures, so we're investing in content. We co-produced the last big five movies with Paramount. We have Weibo, social network. We have local services. So we have travel service, Ali Trip. We have food delivery. We have tickets. And then supporting this are four very important supporting companies that we have. So one is Ant Financial that has Alipay. So to make sure people can transact as easily as possible, we have a financial network. We have Sinow, our logistics network, to make sure 
packages can get from A to B as easy as possible. We have a large marketing services network, Alimama, and all this is built on Ali Cloud, one of our fastest growing businesses. But to put this into more context for you, I want to give you some local examples and local benchmarks, because you, know, you hear a lot of numbers from China. There are a lot of zeros, they're in a foreign currency, so I want to kind of ground this with companies that you're familiar with. Uh, and my intent is to show no disrespect to these companies, uh, but I want to give you a local benchmark. So commerce. Tmall is the leading platform for US to China, but of all our commerce play, we have 493 million monthly active users. Amazon, I believe, ships about 3 million packages a day. Across our sites, we ship 12 million packages per day. So I just want to give you that as a benchmark. We have Alipay, 400 million monthly active users on Alipay. If you compare this to PayPal, PayPal do about 5 billion transactions a year. We do 64 billion transactions a year on Alipay. Sinow is our logistics network. Uh, 42 million packages delivered, represent about 70% of China package delivery and growing. Yuku, 400 million daily mobile video views across the Yuku network. And Weibo, our social network, 132 million daily actives, puts us about the same size as a Snapchat or an Instagram. So we've, we've built this ecosystem from humble beginnings. We've built this ecosystem to serve businesses well in China and help businesses do business easily around the world. And we've leveraged the ecosystem to grow fast, and we've grown fast. So in record time, so it took us 13 years to reach 3 trillion in sales and still growing. Cross-border, hugely important now. The world is moving cross-border faster than ever. We're doing everything cross-border. You know, the bandwidth needed for, to move communication cross-border has to grow exponentially every day. We're communicating cross-border. We're traveling cross-border. We're moving finance and payments cross-border. We're absolutely moving goods and services cross-border. And it's hard to think of any cross-border transaction that happens now that doesn't have a digital component. Everything. I mean, think about the social networks, which I'm sure you're all on. I guarantee every one of you will have a cross-border connection. Every one will you have a friend in a different country. So we're communicating more cross-border. We're traveling more cross-border. We're absolutely buying and selling more cross-border. We're working more cross-border, and we're studying more cross-border. Virtually everything is going cross-border. The traveling piece, hugely important for the US. So the China outbound market is now the biggest in the world. It's a hugely valuable traveler for the US economy. The Chinese travel more. When they get here, they spend more. They're usually using Alipay to do that. And commerce, we can see that firsthand, cross-border. We have thousands of US companies already leveraging Tmall and Tmall Global to sell product into China. You can see the key categories. Most of the purchases are on mobile. And if you look at the demand, the top 10 countries where the shoppers are ordering, US is number one by far. So, you know, if, if there's one thing I want you to take away from this presentation, it's this. If you are currently selling in the US, there's no reason now you shouldn't also be selling into China at volume. And here's another reason why. Just the growth. If you look at 2010, US and China were neck and neck in terms of online shoppers, about 140 million. If we jump forward to 2020, only three years away, it's a very different picture. So Chinese online shoppers are more than 3x that of US. It's a massive opportunity. If you are selling things, you should be selling into China. And a few things that we're working on, and a few things that we're thinking about. So convergence, contact, and context. Convergence for us is about bringing offline and online back together again. We have a big stake in a company in China called Sunning. Ostensibly, Sunning are the best buy of China. So we take our 193 million active buyers, we match that with Sunning's 250 million members, 
And we're developing better practice for offline, online to work together, taking all the goodness of online, the choice, the utility, breadth of goods, the pricing, the ease of payment, and also matching that with offline, where you can return goods at a physical location. You can pick up goods from a physical location. You can try out goods at a physical location. This has got to work better together. You know, every time we go shopping, we have a supercomputer in our pocket. Offline and online has to work in a better, more cohesive way. We recently bought a chain of shopping malls in China in time. We're doing the same there, improving the experience for the consumer by merging both worlds. And an example. So now you can walk into a Sunning, uh, leveraging Alipay. You simply look in the camera, facial recognition, you smile, and you can transact. You can smile, and the transaction's done. Just one kind of fun way we're doing it. So convergence. Contact is another one. So we believe that this goes way more than just a transaction. It goes way past the transaction. It's about the experience and making this fun again. So who's heard of Singles Day? About half of you. Okay, so Singles Day is our, it's our Black Friday, it's our Cyber Monday. It's, it's the whole Thanksgiving weekend wrapped into one day. 11th of November every year. So it starts the night before. We have a four-hour variety show, one of the most watched TV shows in China. Jack's there. We have US celebrities. We have groups. Then the stroke of midnight, the sale begins, and craziness happens. So last year, we had 98,000 merchants participate in the sale. Nearly every country in the world was represented. This goes back to my cross-border point. 37% of all sales were from international brands. 82% were sold on a mobile device. It's still a number that staggers me. 82% were sold on a mobile device. It was how far ahead China are in mobile commerce. And we generated a lot of orders. Our first sale was in 2009, and we did $8 million. Kind of OK. Last year, we did a little better. So last year, we did $17.8 billion in 24 hours. And to put that into context for you, again, not, not to be disrespectful of any companies, but I wanted to ground this in, com in companies that you know. So if currency had remained flat, but it got close to $20 billion in sales. eBay in Q4 did $22.3 billion. So we nearly touched that in one day. That's the size of this thing. It's incredible. And we made it fun. So we introduced virtual reality. We developed a Macy's store. 11 million people use this on mobiles, on Oculus, on HTC. They could walk around a Macy's store and pick up handbags that look like Bambi, which are apparently big in China. <laughs> Things like that. They could look around the store, purchase things, check out information, it was successful. We gamified it. So we introduced a Pokemon Go type game where you could chase the team or cat around the store, throw packages at it, and you're rewarded with vouchers. But my favorite, leading up to the event, we did a fashion show. So we did a big fashion show in Shanghai. We invited most of the main street retailers. We invited a lot of designer brands and we ran this fashion show. And anyone in China could watch this fashion show live on their smartphones. They could watch it live. They could click on the models and get information about any garment that they saw. But the most important thing, they could buy any garment that they saw on that runway straight away. It was a big success. It worked well. And a, a, a few fun metrics for you. So entertainment equals velocity. We sold 600 tons of Costco nuts. That's a lot. 168 tons of Northwest cherries. We sold a lot of iPhones. But my favorite, which just shows you that anything sells, we sold 100 Maseratis in the first 18 seconds. Not too shabby. And third one, context. 
So context for us is about data. And really, we're a data company. We have a lot of data, uh, which gives us a great advantage. And that data is growing massively day by day. And we're leveraging it from mobile devices. So here's another interesting metric. By 2020, more people will have mobile phones than electricity at home. It's actually a marketer's and retailer's dream. People walking around this supercomputer, the signals that they're there to leverage are incredible. So this is increasing the data that we have. We're getting more data from people, smartphones, the technology. We're getting more data about products. The number of products registered every day with UPC is escalating. And the amount of information about those products is also increasing. So and here's an idea how we leverage it. So this is Haribo, sell gummy bears. On the left is the US experience, a website that we're used to, very clean site. On the right is the China experience and what the Chinese consumer wants in terms of data. They're a lot more demanding. They want a lot more data. They want access to a lot more product. And for each individual product, they want a lot of data about that product. Just one of the many nuances and uh, differences between the US and China. You get it, it's a lot. And we do this well because we have a unified ID. So across all our sites, it's the same sign-in, it's the same ID. So we can track transactions, social interactions, media, UQ, UC Web, which is one of the leading browsers, and search. So we have a lot of data. And we also get the question when it comes to marketing and retailing, what's more important? Is it intent? Is it finding that person when they're in that split second when they intend to buy something? Or is it identity? Is it knowing a lot about them? The fact is, to do this well, you need both. And because we have unified ID, we've got intent and identity in spades. And it works well. For big companies, it takes the risk out of China. So we recently signed a, a big deal with Mattel. So not only can we leverage the data we have now to find the right people and the right consumers for Mattel's current product, but you can also spin the business model on its head. Because we know the Chinese consumer that well, we can act as a pretty good development partner for Mattel. So now we're working with Mattel to help them develop better products that fit even better for the Chinese market, especially when it comes to mother and baby and toys. So convergence has to work better. We're bringing offline, online, back together for a way better experience. Contact goes way beyond the transaction. This needs to be a fun, enjoyable experience again. And context is about leveraging as much data as possible to make the whole process as efficient, as effective, not just for the retailer, but also for the consumer. Thank you. <laughs>